have been sitting close to the window, my window into heaven, my eyes fixed on Akka, that city in the distance, white in the sunlight, has been drawing the very soul out of me. I have been feeling the power of the magnet there. At Res 1 2019, the Universal House of Justice recalled the moment when the beloved master was released from the confines of this world to rejoin his father in the retreats of celestial glory. The message stated that at the conclusion of his funeral in 1921, his mortal remains were laid to rest within the mausoleum of the Bab. However, it was envisaged by Shoghi Effendi that this would be a temporary arrangement a shrine was to be erected of a character befitting the unique station of Abdul Baha. In the tablet of visitation, Abdul Baha says, make me as a dust on the pathway of beloved ones. This was a lead for me into what this shrine should be. It is humble and it has gone under the ground and this makes it very unique to see the garden coming and combining with the building. It is somehow a mix of garden and building together. The site for the Shrine of Abdul Baha is adjacent to the Garden of Rizwan, which was prepared by Abdul Baha as a place where Baha'u'llah could find rest in the final years of a life that was largely spent in exile and incarceration. Abdu'l Baha would walk across the Firdos Garden and the Ashraf Garden to the Garden of Rizwan to help with the development of that garden. So it's a special place. Um, it's a holy place in and of itself even before the shrine was built. Abdul Baha shared with a believer at the time that his wish would be to be buried under the sands between Haifa and Akka. So in between the most holy places of the Baha'i faith, the resting places of the twin manifestations, the Bab and Baha'u'llah. So it is on this path that the pilgrims would go. When the early pilgrims would come here and they would arrive here by steamership and beloved Abdu'l-Bahá would send a carriage for them, they talk about the fact that the waves from the Mediterranean Sea would lap up on the wheels and on the hooves of the horses. Because it was a path, the stand was packed down and the carriage could actually go very close to the sea and be able to take them to meet beloved Abdul Baha. We drove along a wide white beach. To our right, a long line of palm trees. Before us, its domes and flat roofs dazzling white beneath the deep blue sky. Akka, the holy city, when the pilgrims came, they were longing to meet their beloved. They were thinking about their beloved. One of the properties of this design is that it is well thought about the meditative path. 
that you have to walk through in order to enter the shrine. The shrine of Abdul Baha is opposite to the Rezvan garden. And in between them, there is a path which has very tall trees on both sides. And in all these paths, there is nothing else to disturb your concentration and meditation about who you are going to meet, what was his attributes, and what you can learn from him. You enter the entrance of a big courtyard, and that large courtyard is the shape of the arms that wants to embrace you with the terraces of flowers on both sides. Like the open arms of Abdul Baha. The construction of the shrine began immediately after the Universal House of Justice announced the project to the global Baha'i community. Very quickly, the project office came together, and by June of the same year, 2019, we have been in operation here. So the foundation was such a, a substantial uh, element of this project in the beginning, where we spent many, many months leveling the ground because it's close to the Mediterranean Sea, and making sure that we're starting off on a substantial footing. Once that began, it was a very smooth process that we went from the base foundation up until the folded walls and the portal walls, preparing really for this ultimate milestone of casting the roof structure, which is the trellis, which is also a very complicated fabrication process of milling these large blocks of EPS into these curved surfaces that make up the geometry of the trellis. In early April 2022, a fire caused by an accident broke out at the site. The morning of the fire, I remember we received an email from the general contractor and the subject of the email was completion of the mold. And he was referring to the formwork for the trellis. And it was a huge milestone because this meant in a couple of months, we'd be ready to pour the trellis. Um, 10 minutes later, we received the first photo of the fire. That was really hard for us to digest, as well as not just us, but also every person that was working on site because they had taken such uh, high levels of ownership of the work that they were doing. Um, and they were really partners with us it's a testament to how much this project meant to everyone we work very closely with, how they understood the significance of being a part of such an amazing project and what this shrine means to the entire Baha'i world. And what came immediately to my heart, actually, was, well, Abdul Baha's built a shrine. He built the shrine of the Bab. And he said, every stone of that building I have with infinite tears and at tremendous cost raised and placed into position. And somehow reminding myself of those words was, a, was an anchor. A few of the other local people who were standing around me, they were all sobbing and crying. The only thing was in my mind, what's gonna happen after the fire? And what would be my first step after the smoke settled down? The next morning was a Saturday. 10 o'clock in the morning, we had a meeting in the office with the project manager. And I remember very, very, like it was yesterday, very vividly, he said, this was an event, it happened, we're gonna move forward. I think, I think there were the two. Nothing here, so all the water. So the stream, the wet area. 
The images and scenery was unbelievable, but yet we know the project survived because we saw what was burned, it was all the bills and vessels, not the structure itself. The first step we really had to take after the site was made safe was to collaborate with the government officials whose responsibility it was, was to ascertain the, the cause of the fire. Our priority was to see the neighbors and the people working there safe. We got a lot, I would say, over a hundred messages of sympathy, support, questions like how can we help. These came from the mayors of the cities, including Akka, but also from national government officials, from neighbors, and just from concerned friends here in the country. הצטערנו מאוד מאוד שזה קרה, זה היה קשה לראות את זה. ואני ידעתי שהם יתקנו את זה, ידעתי שהם יעשו את זה עוד יותר יפה ממה ש... אבל באותו רגע, הייתה תחושה מאוד מאוד קשה. עבדול בהא פעל פה ב... מיד אחרי מלחמת העולם הראשונה. הוא אה, היה פקטור מאוד מרכזי בשיתוף הרווחתי ובעזרה שלו לאנשים, אה, כדי פשוט להציל אותם מהרעב שהיה פה בארץ. והוא באמת ראוי למקדש שבונים לו. This scale of disaster, a lot of time it make people give up, surrendered, uh, uh, frustrated, and, uh, but not here, not here. It's a place with a very strong spirit here. <laughs> عنده قوة وعنده معنويات عالية جدا اللي هو إثبت لنفسه وإثبت لنا إنه بده يكمل المشروع إحنا كلنا مع بعض إحنا توحدنا وقمنا وكملنا المشروع إن شاء الله راح يكمله الآخر. People believe in this. It was more than engineering. It was the the, the salt behind the building, the, the shrine. I think it's very important uh, uh, project not only for the Baha'i. It's very important to all the close neighbors and all the city. Things don't go easy in life. You have to overcome a lot of obstacles and a lot of things that happen to you in the way. And I think this is a good sample that in the end of the day, when the shrine will be standing and beautiful and everybody will look, look the spirit of not to give up is what makes this place so special. In July of 2022, once all of the necessary inspections were made, the project team was able to begin cleaning the site and repairing damaged areas. One simple task was to just clean the site, get rid of the debris, and then, then washing the walls, sandblasting where it needed, to really clean up the site so we can see. The body of the concrete was intact, and we made sure that's the case by doing many tests right after, within the first few weeks, and they call it core test and drilling test, which is specified by structural engineer. Because of this level of accuracy needed, we decided the best thing is to rebuild the column, even though they were structurally sound. And so we stayed with the original design and we didn't have to affect the production of the marble cladding. We are utilizing this opportunity to refine what we had done before, to learn from it, to optimize as much as we can, and do it faster and do it better. While work to restore the site to its previous condition was underway, progress continued off-site. In Italy, the marble that will adorn the trellis was carved into intricate shapes. The amazing mock-up of one of the ribs of the project was constructed in Italy in Margraf office. 
Mr. Amonat and Mr. Sahba had a long history with them. The seat of Universal House of Justice was fabricated in their factory. They have been involved off and on. They did the temple in Delhi. Meanwhile, at the iron shop of the Baha'i World Center, staff and local artisans were swiftly fabricating lampposts that will beautify the gardens in day and illuminate them at night. The blueprint was given to us by Shoghi Effendi. So the lampposts were here before any of us came here. The material which has given to us, we have to bring it with utmost perfection. There is a team behind all these processes, which are locals and volunteers. Alongside these advancements, preparations for the gardens steadily continued. So currently with the landscaping, we've been working really hard with testing the different plants that we're going to be using because actually we've chosen plants that are not generally used currently in the Baha'i World Center palette. The climate within Haifa and Akka is very different even for the plant material. So what, what does really well in Haifa doesn't necessarily do the best in Akka. So we've taken a lot of time to find what are the best materials to use. And particularly because the Resvan Garden site is so close to the sea and the winds will really come in. We're using a lawn that's uh, for these areas here. We're trialing one that is tolerant to salt spray. So far the test is going really well. You know, the whole goal of the garden is that have it a very dignified spot for Abdul Baha. In August of 2022, once the cleaning of the site was completed, work on the central edifice resumed. Another milestone was reached in November of the same year with the completion of the base layer of the Western Berm. The implementation of the design of the berm requires the team to coordinate about 25,000 cubic meters of um, EPS blocks that you see right here. EPS is the perfect lightweight construction material which is appropriate for the kind of design we're going into. The berm on both sides of the central edifice are connected through the trellis, on top of which is a beautiful landscaping design area, which blends with the entire landscaping of the whole project. On the northeast corner of the site, work began in December of 2022 on the Akka Visitors Center, which will welcome pilgrims and visitors to the Shrine of Abdul Baha and the Rizwan Garden. This project is not being accomplished just through the effort of the people on site, but it's also through all of the efforts of the Baha'is around the world who are offering their support and prayers for its completion. The design of the Santuary of Abdul Baha made me think that it's such a blessing to be in an era so special in which we can see la construcción física de algo que también en esencia es espiritual. When we reflect on Abu Baha's life, it's a source of resilience and hope because we can see the influence of his unconditional love, its constant joy, and his commitment to service. Ahí a gente siempre retorna para la figura de Abu Baha. Se a gente sempre lembra desse exemplo, é mais fácil enxergar o final. C'est comme si il avait toujours les yeux fixés vers l'horizon, toujours les yeux fixés vers la destination. We would set a goal, and so all the winds that are blowing would not distract him from that goal. 
if we keep on reading the writings and following the footsteps of Abdul Baha, we are going to have this release of the society building powers of the faith. Abdul Baha's life and his actions, they bring everything into focus. When you read stories about Abdul Baha, you read his words, his writings, it makes things clearer. It makes the path forward more available. Vous vivez tous dans le cœur d'Abdul Baha. C'est comme on est accompagné à chaque instant. Quelle histoire d'amour unique et incroyable. Our carriage stopped. I knew we were at the door of the master. My heart almost ceased to beat. I felt we had arrived too soon, too suddenly, that I was too unprepared. The master is in the garden, said a voice. <laughs> 